This week's trip takes us to Long Island Sound in search of the finicky spring blackfish who are fishing today out of Huntington on Long Island's North Shore. These tips and tricks today should also cover you Connecticut anglers as well. There is a difference when blackfishing between the spring and fall seasons, and there's no one better to explain the difference than Captain James Schneider of the Captain James Joseph in Huntington. Today we're fishing with the bait of choice being clams, and while underway, I spent some time chatting with mate Sean Parada, who then took to the task of preparing our baits for the trip. Once we found our area to fish and our reef or wreck on the fish find, it was time to toss the anchor and get set for some togging. All right, folks, celebrating our second decade, it's time for the Northeast Premier Fishing Show, The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson. The Fishing Line is brought to you by Boaters World, boating and fishing for the world, Boaters World. And by the Outdoor Channel, real outdoors for real people, the Outdoor Channel. Also brought to you in part by Bomber Lures, tie one on. Silver Thread Line, Performance Technology Line. Yum Baits, Start a Feeding Frenzy. Daiichi Hooks, The World's Sharpest Hooks. Yamaha, When You Want the Best. And by Lipa, The Power of Change. Hey folks, you've been coming to the FishingLine.com site for years for the only up to the minute fish reports on the web. Now get the same great reports 24 hours a day by telephone. That's right. The new Fishing Line report line is up and running, and best of all, it's free. No membership fees, no pay-by-the-minute fees. It costs you nothing. A free phone call for the best updated reports 24 hours a day, all by phone. Call 516-977-2088. Does this look familiar? Try shopping at Boaters World. Everything for boating, for fishing, for better times. Boaters World. Deep, deep discounts on over 20,000 marine products. The Montauk Yacht Club has been a public resort and marina since the mid-80s. With over 200 slips, the marina is a perennial favorite for overnight or season-long stays. Yachting Magazine named Montauk Yacht Club one of the top 10 destinations in America, Mexico, and the Caribbean. With beautiful baths, luxurious rooms, and wireless internet access, the Montauk Yacht Club is tastefully elegant, relaxing, and invitingly fresh for wedding or corporate functions, with dining and lounge just steps away. Yamaha's new 250 horsepower four-stroke delivers everything you want in an offshore outboard. Its unique variable camshaft timing and electronic throttle valve deliver breathtaking torque, powerful acceleration, smooth trolling, and exceptional fuel efficiency. All wrapped up in Yamaha's legendary four-stroke turn-the-key reliability. Everything you want, and then some. black fishing, sometimes these pieces are small. They may not even be any larger than a boat we're on. You have to have exact, exact precision anchoring technique to make sure you are on this thing. These things are very, very small, and sometimes the smaller ones are better because they're just infested with life, and we're going to see what happens here. So sometimes as soon as you hit the bottom, you get your bites. you got to be prepared. So this is where the expertise of a captain is so important, particularly when it comes to black fishing, whether it's spring or fall, having a captain who can put you on a piece. And a lot of these pieces are secret. We can't show any numbers. It's almost top secret CIA stuff. But having the right captain who can put you exactly on the piece and take three, four, five efforts, not be close enough. It may be close enough for rock and roll, but it's not close enough for black fishing, that's for sure. You know what you catch here sometimes? Four spots. Four spots? Yeah. What's that? 
They're sold, four spots. You rarely catch them on a hook, but you catch them on the edge of this wreck. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, we got a lot of customers on the boat, and, you know, and one part of the wreck's hanging off. Right. And it hangs down the side. You usually see one or two. They're pretty cool looking, too. They're good eating, but they don't... I've never caught more than two in a day. And they love structure. They love the edge of structure. Very nice high piece here. He came Would you back. Like to keep it, Jerry? Yeah. Oh, nice fish. He came back for it. I missed him on the first shot. He must have had a little scrap left, and he got greedy. <laughs> got him off the bottom. There you go. Oh, Swing yeah. Him in here. Nice fish, Rich. You want to grab the leader for me there? Yep. There you go. There you nice go. fish Thanks, right Rich. there. Fish. Nice. Now, Jimmy, let's explain to the folks at home what the difference in this early spring black fishing here in April is compared to what you do in the fall? Is there a difference in the black fishing? Yeah, like we talked about on the way out, they seem to favor the soft baits as they're coming out of that right. dormant stage in the winter. So you're better off with a soft bait, with a skimmer clam, and just you really got to let the fish, fish eat. Like we anchored up today, the bagols harassed us, and we waited them out, and now we're starting to pick some nice blackfish. And what happens is you'll feel the rat-a-tat-tat of the bagols, and all of a sudden there'll be dead silence, and the next bite you get is usually a blackfish. Yep, you'll, you'll feel brum brum like he's explained, the machine gun hit, <laughs> and then they'll come on, and they'll push him out of the way and say, right. that's mine, I'm taking it. All right, good. we'll put this in the uh, live well here, and we'll get back to fishing. It's almost like a pattern. It's like if you don't set them after two bites, you wait and try to set the hook after four bites. If that doesn't work, you give them six bites, and then maybe you got to go back to four, five bites, or four and a half bites, or count to two. Yeah, I don't know that, what to do. It's that mm -mm 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 <laughs> that you need, that, that up and down. That must be stripped clean after that. That was a pretty good. Oh, maybe not. I hope he's back. Come on. You got him. There we Here go. We There's one. Turn on. Nice, easy, there easy. There we go. Think you need a net, Rich? No. No, he is that big. I can him. swing him in, but it's... There we go. There you go. Not too bad. This is a nice fish. Look at him, on the clams, hooked in the corner of the mouth. Teeth don't seem as. I'll tell you one thing: in the spring, the teeth are much better shaped than they are when they're when you bite them in the fall. If you look at that, teeth all pearly white, that not all broken. They've been growing all winter, and they haven't been chewing on barnacles, all that stuff. They're just coming out of the uh, their slumber. But look how nice and clean and white those pearlies are. You get them in the fall, they got half their teeth are broken. They've been chewing on hot stuff. Yep. Oh, come on. That was some hit. Come on back. See ya. Thanks, Sean. Got some good life down here, Rich. Yeah, I know. When hurricanes ravaged Florida, it left millions in damage, except for the owners of Tide Slide. No damage, thanks to the Tide Slides. This patented design held boats fast during the worst that Mother Nature could dish out. Using stainless steel and 100% UV stabilized polymer parts, it's simple to install and impervious to salt water and sunlight. Could not be more handy with the Tide Slides. Buy them. Find out more at Tideslide.com or call 1-800-780-6094.
Last three, take none. There he is! Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. Jimmy, you really can't stress enough how important it is to be able to anchor a boat up when it comes to this kind of spring black fishing, can you? Oh, that's, I mean, when you're fishing structure like that, if the fish aren't going to wander off the structure, if you're not on it, you know, you got no shot, you're not going to get a bite. You know, it's different than fishing a rocky area. You know, you can be close, you can be on the rocks and maybe not on the best piece, but they'll come to you. They'll move. They're not going to move off a wreck. I notice you are, you are making effort. You're on, you're off, then you're on. You had a little bit of life. You could feel the, the piece on one side of the boat, but not the other, and you pulled up the anchor. Once you establish where your anchor was, you then adjust the anchor. You got a bite? Is that, say, there you go. Oh. <laughs> and then what you do is you pull in the anchor, you take the anchor line out, and you basically almost spun the boat on the anchor. Yeah. Without pulling the anchor, which was key because it kept us on the spot. Yeah, we were shearing fish, yeah. with wind against tide, right. you know. We had a little shear there, and uh, you can feel the life. As soon as you get down, you know they're there. It's just a matter of letting them eat. I mean, we're letting them eat like we'd eat like codfish. Right, right. Just like a, you'd let a codfish eat. There's a, there's a striped bass. Oh, my God. Look, look at that. that. <laughs> All right, Rich. Oh, boy. Oh, well. Look at that. That's sure. a little added bonus on the clams. Yep. You never know what's going to come up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'd say we'd be disappointed with a striped bass, That's right? right? We thought we had a nice black fish on there, we got a bass. Yeah, Healthy bad. looking fish, though. Cold. Feel how cold that fish is. Oh, yeah. Yep. Man. Yep. Got lice on them? Yeah, a little bit of lice. Schools are coming through. It's just about yep. that time. Looks like yep. a little male, but that is an ice cold fish, man. Oh, man. Whew. I thought that was the big tog. Yeah, I thought that was the one. Thanks, Sean. Oh, baby. It's time for our tip of the week. Brought to you by Boaters World. Boating and fishing for the world. Jim, you got a great tip for the folks at home this week, and what is it? Well, use a zip tie or a light piece of cord to trip the grapple. With all the pressure on the piece of bottom, you're never going to get the grapple out when you're applying direct pressure to the piece mm -hmm. of bottom unless you're going to move the wreck itself or break off a piece, damaging the piece of bottom. So what you want is a wire tie. When the pressure is applied, you pop it with the boat. It'll trip the grapple. The chain will slide around to the back, and it pulls it out of the bottom so back. So basically, you're just going to pull on the pressure. The boat's just going to pull it out like this. Right, and it'll come up and slide out of the wreck backwards. That's a great tip, and that's our boat as well, tip of the week. That's the hardest part of spring black fishing. In the fall, bang, bang, set the hook, you're yeah. in. Yeah, that's the, the, the competition. Now it's, they're down there, they're looking at the bait, and they're wondering whether they even want to eat or not. You know? There you go. Nice keeper. They hooked them good, huh? Yeah, you got Right through the good. corner of the mouth. Another little female. Yeah, about 15, 16 inches is a keeper. Yeah, beautiful. So I'm back in the well. All right, we're going to put that in the live well. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to take a commercial break here. We'll come back after this break. Some more spring black fishing with Jimmy Schneider and his new charter boat. You've known him, of course, with the Captain James Joseph all these years. So stay with us. We'll be right back here on the fishing line. All right, Jimmy, I got a bait up. I got a new hook on my line here. Step right up underneath, you know, right where I was there. Hey folks, you've been coming to the FishingLine.com site for years for the only up-to-the-minute fishing reports on the web. Now get the same great reports 24 hours a day by telephone. That's right, the new Fishing Line report line is up and running and best of all, it's free. No membership fees, no pay-by-the-minute fees, it costs you nothing. A free phone call for the best updated reports 24 hours a day, all by phone. Call 516-977-977. 2088-516-977-2088. The Outdoor 
Outdoor Channel is the channel you've been waiting for. We bring you the real outdoors with hours of hunting action each and every day. If real outdoor entertainment is what you're looking for, then you need the Outdoor Channel. Call your cable provider let them know that you want the only real outdoor network, the Outdoor Channel. Captains and guides have known for years the blood red color triggers a natural feeding response in fish. Fish ignore popular colors, but they can't resist taste testing the bleeding bait color. Now you can add the world's sharpest hooks and the natural feeding response in fish with Daiichi's bleeding bait hooks. In tests across the country, Daiichi bleeding bait hooks outfished ordinary hooks as much as 3 to 1. Whether you're worming for bass or chunking stripers, outfish your friends with Daiichi bleeding bait hooks. I love it here. The sand, the water, and it reminds me of how precious our natural resources are here on Long Island and how we must preserve them for future generations. Simple steps like shutting off lights, turning down the air conditioner, and buying products with the Energy Star label, along with supporting the use of alternative energy sources, will help ensure a beautiful Long Island. LIPA. More choice, better service. Oh, come on, come on, come on. You got him, you got him, Rich. That's a small fish. There That's he is. Fish. Yep. <laughs> Took a while, right? They're like semi dormant. Yes. Yeah, it's... There you go, Rich. Look at that little guy. Boy, it's like. You getting life there, too? Yeah, he really got to wait him out. You know, it ain't like the fall, right? When yeah, they attack, yeah. you really got to wait him out. In the fall, you get them on a, certainly on the, by the second bite. Here mm. it's three, four, then they stop, then they push it yeah. around. They're pushing yeah. it around with their nose. They're thinking, should I eat? Do I want to spawn? Do yeah, I want right. to eat? You know? And next thing you know, I'll throw them back there, sure. Yeah. And then, uh, but it's really a weird, weird bite to spring black fishing, isn't it? Yeah, you, you got to right be patient. He's Good just job. like, he. Had, yours was checking it out. He's just checking it out. Sure. Sometimes you actually got to wait so long, you let you let them steal your bait, and then you hope to get them the next time down because right. they just don't take it right. But so it's better to wait on them than to hook them and spook them. Maybe you'd lip them or, or roll them off the hook and you'll lose them. Get them next time down. They're only going to get a little more aggressive once they steal the bait. Now, this is a situation where you almost want to walk the rod out of your hands before you're actually going to react. And right, it's like they're shaking your hand. You'll feel that bang, bang. You know, as you know, they feed tail up, head down. Right, right. So they look at it, they'll pick it up, spit it, pick it up, spit it. And when you get that, finally get that good hit, where you're shaking your, shaking your hand. Right. I mean, surf fishing, guys, this time of year, you'll know, you'll get a lot of nice blackfish from the surf. Right. Sandworms, soft bait, same type of deal. You just let out a little extra line in the sand and let them run, you know, like a bass. Right, right. And let them take off with the bait. All right, I got to bait up again here. All right, Rich. There he goes, now he's back. Oh! Jimmy Schneider, black fishing isn't all that difficult when it comes to the right tackle to choose. You gotta go stout and you gotta have a conventional tackle, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, when you're wreck fishing, you wanna be able to get the fish out the first couple of feet, it's the most important thing. And after that, you can go easy, but the first couple of feet, getting them away from the structure, that's where it's important. We're running party boat trips with the Captain James Joseph, you know, in the fall with the black fishing. You've seen angles come out with bakery string and spinning rods and ugly sticks. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, you see tackle broken off like you can't believe. They just don't get the fact that you have to fish something sturdy. We like braided line or at least 40-pound mono, right. depending on what you prefer. And a lot of times now, the main rig we're using here today, of course, is we're using single hooks. You don't want to get in the double hooks when you're using a lot of these sticky pieces in the Connecticut area, right? That's right. Two hooks, you could have a fish on one hook, one hook in the rack, then the fish is hooked down there for months at a time waiting right. for the hook to rust out. You want to fish clean. You know, in case you break your sinker off, you'll get the fish in, or if you do break the rig apart, the fish will swim away, be able to live. Another thing you'll notice, folks, is how this stands off because of the extra couple of half fishes we put in and a heavy duty monofilament or leader material here, which has got to be at least 40 to 60 pound test up here, which makes it stand off so it's not laying down like this, so when you bounce your sink and you come up, it gets caught in the wreck, right? Yeah, the standoff knot will lessen the hangs and hopefully catch you more fish, you know? And it's very strong. It doesn't half the strength of your line right. like a dropper loop will. Mm -hmm. 
And you were using a jig master for a while. You went old school with the old jig yeah, master. Yeah, went old then. school, you know, just to show that, you know, you can pull it off. <laughs> That's you know, right. some guys use the sidewinder, and you can pull it off with that. Some of the old timers still come out with the sidewinders, or you could go with the modern good looking reel. Makes That's you right. look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> I got a good 50 or 60 pound test, tough line on here. There's a lot of braided lines in the market. You're going to come out with a monofilament, and a good quality monofilament, but it's got to be a good 40, 50 pound test. Leave the spinning rods and a light tackle for the light tackle stripe bass fish, and you're coming out here for meat, right? Yeah, you're coming out. I mean, no, there's nothing sporting either about constantly breaking off fish with hooks in their mouth. That's right. You know, you want to get the fish in the boat, stop a couple of times on the way up. If you have a small one, let them decompress so they don't get the bends, mm -hmm. and then release them. If you're going to have improper tackle, all you're going to do is break fish off in the wreck, and they'll be running around, you know, with five, six feet of line on them. Then they're going to end up dying. Well, that's not sporting either. No, it's not. Let's get back to small fishing action. Decent fish here, Rich. Can you just... You need a net? No, no I got cut it. we've been doing? Okay. A little nicer. A little bit better colors. Yeah, nice. Bigger female. Nice. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's been awake for a while anyway. Yeah, she's got nice color too. Check the bait and I'm snagging it. A nice one, Sean. Yeah. It's all in the well. Yeah, Rich, the, all the wrecks that are on the bottom here, a lot of them date back to revolutionary times. You know, well, I'm stuck in it now. The, uh, actually, they used to call it the Devil's Pass because the, they were used to crossing the ocean and having navigating the long swell. They'd get up in the sound here with the tides coming out of the East River in a hard northwest actually break the boats apart on the big storms because of the shortness between the waves and between all the rocks. You know, they didn't have Loran and GPS. They'd either run aground or break apart in the rips. And that's how it got its nickname. <sighs> Stuck in one of the devils right now. Yeah, that was all wood, though. Wouldn't that wood all be, like, gone? Oh, no. No, they had steel. Steel's been around a long time. And, and they, there's some wood around. There's a couple of old schooners that are around. There's paddle wheels around right. still that are broken apart. There's one we fish off Port Jeff there. So old paddle wheel broken up on the bottom. Good fishing on that. But the best wrecks seem to be the steel ones. You know, anytime you can fish on something that has a higher profile, seems to be more life. And the steel holds a lot more life than the wood. The guys get in trouble, they're towing a scrap barge. Nobody's out to see what goes on. And while it's sinking, they always use the older barges to carry the steel. And if it's going down, what are they going to do? They're going to cut it loose and let it go. A lot of our numbers come from the old lobstermen. They give this, they run their gear out and they get hung in something. You know, they, we give them our rack and replace for the information. They get hung on something that's uncharted and they give us the numbers and right. we go check it out. We got about 100 wrecks between 15 and Port Jeff here. Some of them hold fish and some don't. What decides whether the wreck is going to hold fish or not? Well, what it's made out of and the bottom it's on, you know, the wreck that's on a rocky bottom is, of course, going to get more light. It'll fill in like a hotel because you're going to have more blackfish in the area. A wreck that's out in the silt or the mud may only be good for one or two shots an entire season. It'll get cleaned off of its resident fish, and that'll be the end of that. So, Jimmy, we're talking about how light and how weird this bite is. Sometimes it pays to put the mushier clam on and not worry about losing bait all the time, right? That's right. I mean, we're on a smaller piece of structure here. There's not as much pagol life as we were on the heavy piece. So we're going with a little softer, the little of the belly, and we're fishing it almost like you would with codfish, just right. letting the fish eat and eat. 
So you want to almost walk away with the sinker. A good sized fish will actually lift the sinker right off the ground and you'll suddenly you feel your rod come up. Exactly. They, they tail up, head down, the, the sinker will come off off the bottom, then you know you got them and you just lean back on them. And I've seen guys want to kick, catch blackfish like this. I noticed you do it, but you got the technique down, but some people say you want to fight them like this. I mean, some of the guys I've seen, you know, I like to get them like this because I want to get them up off the reef as fast as you can off the piece, right? You know, it depends on how you feel you're strong, but, you know. Right. As, as long as you got enough power into it, you know, you want to get them off the bottom right away so they don't get back in the structure. Whoa. Oof. Oh! oh. <laughs> Man, that was, yeah, that was no short there. No, that was, uh... No. That was the one we wanted. Wow. We definitely let him eat, maybe too long. Keep it. I tell you, Rich, you just picked up the sink of that tub. Yeah, stripped again. There you go. There's there another two-pound fish. Oh, another one there. A lot of females, you know, see the soft around the face. Getting so far, mostly females. Exactly, just hold them up, Jimmy's. Female has a smoother, rounder face. A male, you get a, especially a, a big fish, has almost like a big square head, it'll have a big white chin on them, that's the way to tell the difference. I don't know if they've spawned out yet, or they're still no, in the they haven't really started. She doesn't feel like she's real thick or yeah, heavy with yeah. roe or anything, you no, know? Everything's late this year. If that was a big fish filled with roe, we'd throw her back, but since she's not, we're gonna go ahead and keep this one. Yeah. That's a keeper. Oh yeah, sure is. Nah, you snagged him when you missed the first one. Look at him, he's done right in the head. Yeah, you harpooned him in the side That's of the That's good bass bait right there. Well, folks, there's another monster for the memory banks. But all kidding aside, oh, we didn't catch any trophy tog today. We did catch fish for the table, had fun wetting a line, and learned the difference in togging between seasons with one of the more knowledgeable captains in Jimmy Schneider. Get out and enjoy the spring season and explore new opportunities. Either way, we'll see you back here next week fishing in your own backyard, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, as we did today on Long Island. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next week here on The Fishing Line. Bye-bye. To add the uncut extended copy of this program to your library with unseen catches and captain's interviews, just follow the directions on the screen. The Fishing Line with Rich Johnson was brought to you by Boaters World. Boating and fishing for the world. Boaters World. And by the Outdoor Channel. Real outdoors for real people. The Outdoor Channel. Also brought to you in part by Bomber Lures. Tie one on. Silver Thread Line. Performance Technology Line. Yum Baits. Start a feeding frenzy. Daiichi Hooks. The world's sharpest hooks. Yamaha, when you want the best. And by LIFA, the power of change. We'll see you next time on The Fishing Line. So long, everybody.